We're recording. Good evening. We're February 7th, 2024. Got an airport commission meeting. Uh, five, well, supposedly 5 p.m. What do we got for our time? 5.05. Okay, we'll shift. 5.06. Um, it is everybody got a copy of the minutes? And the agenda. Yep. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't know that information off the top which, of my head. Which fence, please? Those uh, chain link fence. 
The one that's all the way around the airport? Yeah, but the one off the end of uh, off the end of the runway. Correct. The yeah, the runway. it's not the whole yeah. not the whole fence, just, it's a, just portion, that portion a portion right. of the one fence. at the north end of the runway. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, run I don't know at the north end of the runway. I don't know why it's such a thing, because if you stand on the runway you can't see the fence. Yeah. So yeah, and if you go over um, the end of the runway, it's gonna well, be we had a Columbia do, we had a Columbia to do that and it went off to the end and missed the fence completely. Yeah. And that was before we did any work here. So a couple of years whatever it is, it can't be much. Today. Yeah, I, I don't I don't believe it is, but I would have I unfortunately yeah, I would have to get that number from there. Right. It's just not look very intrusive to me. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. And and to us as well. Um, but we'll work with that thing. And I like thought I said, the wall was gonna correct. The stone wall that they that they put in up together, right? Yeah. So I think that I think the issue is um, typically the way obstructions in that area are evaluated is um, at the runway end elevation. So when you stand at the end of the runway, you can clearly see that the fence is below, but. Um, FAA has now come back and said that actually, no, they want to see the um, starting point of that surface be would basically begin um, the nearest point of the end of the runway safety area. So where that runway safety area kind of slopes down a little bit, it's there's the height differential there. Um, and again, I could get the um, yeah. I can get the exact number from from Nick, but um, right. so that's that's what we're working through with them right now. So moving on um, to the um, situation with the, the septic with uh, Mr. Beckner. So uh, Raymakers actually responded uh, this afternoon after I printed these updates. Um, basically, they would like to have a site meeting with uh, the airport, with Gail, um, and with Mr. Beckner once the weather is a little bit more decent to view the area and come up with, um, you know, just come up with whatever solutions. They want to look at it. Yeah, they, they, they'd like to see it. I'm presumably when there's no snow on the ground. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any questions on the runway project? That, and, and I apologize if I didn't have the full information. If anyone uh, needs me to take a question back to Nick, I'm more than happy to do that. Make sure you get a I have one point you. on that. So uh, we received a request from the Foundation for Fair Contracting of Massachusetts to give them all the certified payrolls for the runway project. So I contacted Nick and Andrew gave me all the certified payrolls that were given out for this project and I asked them if it's okay if we give them to this group, Foundation for Fair Contract in Massachusetts and they said it was okay. So this afternoon I forwarded them that information. Who's that company? That group? It sounds like it's a non profit. You know. And what concern of that is it to them? Uh, prevailing wages in Massachusetts is important. You have to pay them what the prevailing wage is, and they are the, you know, the oversight people or the, uh, yeah, to, to look at that. Okay. To make sure that. Raymakers and whoever else pay the correct wages to their employees or contractors. Well, Massachusetts is big on that. New Hampshire, not so much. Massachusetts is very, very big on that. You must pay for real wages. Yeah, and I know all the all the wage rates are included in um, in any construction contract, and we provide updated uh, typical operation procedures. You know, I, I didn't personally do a book. Typically, we provide an updated copy of what those prevailing wage rates are uh, to the contractor uh, periodically so they have that updated um, information. So, yeah, so it's probably people like Watchdog Group just checking out one of the projects. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with, I'm not familiar with that, um, with that organization. But let us know if, um, if there's anything else at all that you need. Um, you know, happy to provide you with whatever you need as well. Yeah. Any other questions on the runway project before I move on? Okay. Um, so, airport master plan update. As everybody knows, uh, draft chapters one through four were provided to FAA and MassDOT. 
uh, following last month's meeting. We actually received comments back from the FAA yesterday afternoon. Um, I haven't had the time to actually go and make any changes yet, but I did see the comments. They seem relatively minor in nature, uh, fortunately. So I'll go through. I'm still waiting on Mass DOT to respond. I was expecting a response today, but but maybe something came through as I was driving down that I just didn't see yet in my email. So if I don't have those comments from them, I'll follow up tomorrow and see where they're at and just try to get all those comments you know, incorporated as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so no master plan stuff really today, um, other than you know waiting on FAA to ultimately issue an approval of that forecast, which is the growth rate anticipated at the airport, mm -hmm. and uh, the critical aircraft, which is the plane that all the facilities uh, de are, is designed around. So the dimensions of that plane kind of dictate the different dimensions of your facilities, taxiway widths, separation, safety areas, things like that are all determined by that aircraft. So once we get that approval, uh, we can move into subsequent chapters of the master plan. The next chapter is chapter five, which will be facility requirements. And that chapter is um, where, you know, Gail will make recommendations basically to address any sort of capacity shortfalls, any outdated, um, you know, facility conditions, um, any sort of compliance issues um, that, that might be going on with respect to the size of facilities, separation standards, spacing, you know, sometimes a tie down this comes into play if it's been a while since you had um, an apron reconstructed, so th things like that. Um, and we'll look at all of that and um, compare them to current uh, FAA guidance, advisory circulars, orders, anything that would be relevant to the airport and provide those recommendations. Um, to the commission about basically here's you know for lack of a better term here's what's wrong and here's the recommendation of what can be done to um, improve or, or correct that um, that issue. So after facility requirements chapter is complete and we identify all of the issues that are you know really going on and ways to resolve them, we go into your um, development of alternatives and that is where we actually take a look at you know what. Um, might the airport need that is that is a new facility and what where could uh, those facilities potentially be placed what is the right size of these facilities um you know things of that nature and at that point in time what i think i'll do is um i'll probably request faa um mass DOT, gail and then representation from the commission um to have a little bit of a meeting to talk about all of those different projects that might be warranted, might be needed, might be wanted, and um, just get get FAA and MassDOT's input as we're going through the process so we know that once we get to actually putting those alternatives on paper, that they've been vetted through the agencies and that you know we're, we're um, you know kind of getting that guidance along the way that we might need. Um, oh, I do have an update of, well, more information requested, but I do have an update on the weekends. Um, I actually got a response today from the FAA um, from Sam's committee. She recommended that um, they, they do need some more information about those weekends. They recommended that the airport file um, airspace cases for each beacon. So it basically tells the FAA um, how far the beacon is away from the runway, the height of the beacon, and then they can evaluate that as to uh, whether or not um, re removal is necessary, if the removal is eligible, if they need to remain operational. So we can, um, you know, we can work with them to see to see what you know. So we can just do. get that information off our plans that we have. Yeah, we should have all of that information. Um, you guys already have it. We, we should. Um, I mean, we, we were part of the, the beacon installation. If there's information okay. that we need, um, again, I just got this message <laughs> this afternoon before I headed down here. So um, I haven't had the time to really dig, you know, dig in and see what we actually have on hand. But I would assume we have most of what we need to. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. Continue saying forward motion. Um, it's what we're trying to do. And I know sometimes, like, these. I, I feel so bad because these, these projects, a lot of times it's like you get have more questions than answers, but we're digging out the questions so we can get you to where you need to be. Awesome. Thank you for your hard work. Of course. Of course. I'm happy to happy help. I was so happy to see that email come through today. I was like, I just, I have an answer on this finally. Um, so 
really no actions required for commission at this time on the master plan. Um, are there any questions that I can answer about that process at all? On the, on the master plan, that's for the next 20 years, correct? That's correct. So needless to say, we need to put our wish list on that master plan, may it be a new building here, mm -hmm. a new runway, or anything else that we wish to right. have, we need to put it on there. I would say so, yeah. And, and again, I think that meeting with FAA and MassDOT and, um, you know, maybe Jim, Isabel, um, I think would be extremely helpful because they can really, um, you know, provide guidance as to what, what sort of, what's, what's feasible here. I mean, I know funding is an issue at almost <laughs> Almost every single airport, I mean, every pretty much every airport that you know we all deals with, you you have funding, you know, constraints and things like that. And there's always the list is always longer than the, the available funding. So right. just kind of making sure that, um, and really the purpose of this master plan, at least my understanding was making sure that the airport is prioritizing projects, you know, within that funding and making sure that you can get kind of the best. The, the, mo the most for the money that you have available. Cool. Yeah. Yes, that will be the only thing. We, we will likely, um, that, that will certainly be a discussion. It seems like that's yeah. something that the airports want to do. The SRE building? Yeah. Um, so that, that's something, yeah, that, that um, I know has been on the wish list for a long time. Um, and and we'll, yeah, we'll absolutely be part of the discussion, um, you know, when, when we start talking to FAA and SUT about yeah, that. Yeah, that should be like number one on the list. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, so moving on to the wildlife hazard site visit project, and I have to thank um, Isabel for her speedy and you know responses and getting with the independent fee estimator and making sure that um, you know she she followed up and everything else. So um, we received final uh, comments from MassDOT on the scope of work on the 10th of January. Uh, no, nothing nothing major to, to speak of it like it almost type of type of type of stuff um can't remember off the top of my head exactly but there was nothing um that changed the actual scope itself um so we incorporated those final comments into the scope of work and um then Isabel was able to move forward with soliciting that independent fee estimate. I know I've probably said this a hundred times, but the independent fee estimate was required by the FAA um, basically to provide what they would feel is an adequate fee for the wildlife hazard site visit project. Um, so Isabel received the IFE um, back from the estimator. I forwarded Isabel um, our fee um, so that she could compare them. And you actually have a copy of Gail's fee attached to um, the report here. I know um, the, so Gail's fee was $50,436. And the independent fee estimator had estimated uh, $59,250, so our fee came in far lower than hers. Um, typically, what FAA is looking for is um, for the fees to be within 10% of each other. So Gales is actually below the 10% requirement, but we do feel that you know we can complete the work uh, within the hours that we have allotted in our contract. So I've prepared today a. Um, record of negotiations for consideration um effectively saying that um that you know that airport will um the airport would enter into a, the contract with gale associates for about fifty thousand four thirty six, and i have a draft copy of that letter here that anyone may may view if they wish i actually printed out two copies so that anyone can see it there's no confusion and then isabel like puts it right over there do you have anything, Isabel, that you wanted to um, say? Uh, just for local share, so it could have been as high as 80000 I was happy to see it. Um, 
as low as 50,000, which means the local share would not be greater than $2,700, and the mass DOT share would be $2,700. Right. So that's reasonable. So, and I, I did put a summary of um, the breakdown of the cost. So the wildlife hazard site visit Gail's fee, um, and then the sponsor administration for the independent fee estimate of 3,500. So the total proposed grant amount would be 53,936 with a local share of uh, $2,696.80. Um, so what I'm hoping for tonight, um, two things. Um, because grant applications are due on March 1st this year to the FAA, it's a very, very early deadline this year. Um, I'm hoping, number one, um, that the commission can make a vote um, to approve Gail to forward the record of negotiations letter to Mayor Nicholson for signature. Um, and then two, also vote to authorize Gail to prepare and circulate um, the grant applications through FAA and MassDOT um, for signatures by the mayor and then subsequently submit those to FAA and MassDOT for fiscal year 2024 funding. So I'll let everybody kind of digest that for a minute and ask any questions that you might have um, before, you know, before requesting that vote. But that's what I'm hoping for tonight. I think this has to go before the council. Does it? Or I don't know. The mayor would know the answer to that. Well, well, they have to appropriate the money. Well, first, we need to vote on it. But I mean, and then we can bring it to the city council and the, the, and the mayor. The vote, I just don't want to go my box. Do box in. It's got to go through the mayor before, before we. Understood. Before we can be sure that. You know, okay. That's my only concern. Because uh, I know the money's tight. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we vote to move it up the chain, does that buy in? What's it running? Well, you haven't submitted a grant application for anything yet. So there isn't yet. anything yet. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is that vote is, is binding on the city? Let's put it that way. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That I'm not, I'm not familiar with the, the because bylaws of the city. I'm not sure yeah. we can. Does the airport commission have authorization to um, expend any sort of funds at all? Or is that? That's where I, that's, you know, I was told not to bind us to any kind of money. Yeah. It has to be run through, through the mayor's office. office. And whether yeah. it comes out of his budget. Even though it's only $2,700, he still has to. He has okay. to sign off on it. Yeah. Could we do this? Could we, pending, a, could we, because the, the issue of pending the approval, pending by, the the approval, approval by, by the mayor. mayor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think we can, but I think we've got to be careful with, you know, okay. you know box them in to a point, because if it's, not in his radar, we, you know, it's going to be surprised. Understood. And I don't like to do that. Okay, understood. Um, and so I have to be careful. Okay, I, com I completely understand that. Um, so I guess what I would say is maybe, again, with the caveat, everything pending approval by the mayor. Um, right, before we... I mean, we can't bind a contract or, or anything like that without his approval. Okay, and how, I guess, would you like for, what would you like for Gail's level of involvement to be with respect to this project? Isabel, would you prefer to approach the mayor? Can we give it to him tomorrow? He's the only one that can sign the contract. And yeah, I mean, if we have this, this uh, item, he's the only one. Yes, okay, uh, so understood. And, and run by him tomorrow. Okay, and, and please feel free to provide him with, you know, copy of our update with the details of right. the project, and then I'm happy to, you know, have a phone call or a uh, teleconference or any sort of meeting, come down and have a meeting, whatever needs to transpire that makes your life easier, I'm happy to do that. I just want to be very careful with that because I know yes. when I, uh, in my conversations, I realized that 
money is tight and mm -hmm. they need to be careful. Okay. So that's all. Yeah, I, I completely understand. And whether it's within his budget, which is very limited, then I don't know mm -hmm. but Pending his approval, can you detail you know, using some language and sentences what it is we're uh, hypothetically asking for? Sure, yeah. Well, it's the, it's the what, 20. So the, the language actually, uh, it, I put the language. It's in right, red? Yep, in the red there. Um, which document is that? Sorry, this is the Gales monthly update, page three of four. Um, oh, here, here you go. Okay. And that's on page three. Um, and it's the, the, the share estimates. So the action is being requested by the commission. Uh, so we're going to forward the negotiations to mayor, and we're going to authorize Gale to prepare and circulate grant applications or signatures by the mayor and subsequently submit to the agencies for 2024, funding by March 2024. And uh, so Pen, yeah, that pending. doesn't detail what we're asking for. Well, it's the 5% share of the wildlife project, wild hazard project, is what we're detailing. The detail we're trying to approve. Okay? And you see the the share is the total cost is fifty three thousand nine hundred thirty six. Yeah. And the we're we're going after the we need to have approval for the twenty six hundred ninety six dollars and eighty cents. And what we're what are we asking for? What's this money going to be spent on? Please? The wildlife hazard site, site visit. And. Uh, that's going to cost fifty-three thousand dollars. Yes, fifty-four thousand. So you that, that's for them to come out here twice, and for walk around with the binoculars and yeah, and say, hey, watches and this is what we got for animals. That's great. Seems an awful lot of money for something something that's. Uh, we, the Gardner Airport Commission, think that's money well spent. We have no choice if we want any more money. That's it. Can't do it without it. It's so so the the big thing is the wildlife are viewed as sort of an impediment to uh, progress at the airport moving into the future. Is that yes? Yes. If, if it is or isn't right, and if and especially is. especially with respect to you know any sort of any sort of fencing, um, that that's really where um, you know what FAA is going to want to see the justification for fencing at a general aviation airport is really um you know would be wildlife deterrent fencing and then any sort of safety issues they want to see um that the airport is taking you know steps to address those issues as well have there been any interactions between aircraft and wildlife uh, Jim, that you can recall uh no other than the occasional turtle that you dodge on the way but it, it, it involves all of that, but I mean, it's, that's what we've got to look at. And if there needs to be more fencing and how high and all that sort of stuff, all plays It won't take much of a fence to keep a turtle off. Well, you'd be surprised, probably more than you think, but we have, you know, we have the migration every year. Yes. Pretty much. It's very nice. And it's, but, it's uh, yep. you know, there are a lot of animals in this area. And we see deer, we see skunks, and muskrats. Yeah, you name it. But we, uh, the FAA requires that we have an official study that puts some parameters on all this other stuff to proceed forward. These are steps. And if you don't, and it is it is a typical study that would be a lot of times it would be included. You know, you like to try to include it as part of a master plan study or following master plan study. Um, you know, to support recommendations that are made in the master plan for safety-related projects. And uh, what organization would earn the fifty-three thousand dollars? So part of that would go to the um, environmental um, person that comes out, the qualified airport qualified wildlife biologist. Um, part of that fee would go to Gale Associates for administering the project. 
for providing updates, coordinating with FAA to make sure that they have the opportunity to review the documentation, okay. comment on it, things like that, and then the $3,500 to the independent fee estimator um, for providing that, um, the estimate services. What time of the year will we be doing this? It depends on when the funding, um, when the funding gets approved, but hopefully um, you would see the project get approved before before the end of the summer, and then the the wildlife hazard site visit would occur shortly after that, July or August, maybe. So uh, according to your other paperwork we have here, it says that the wildlife site visit is nineteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The project development of it is fifteen thousand dollars. And then the administration of it is fifteen thousand dollars, correct? That's correct. Right. So who is the project development? Is that Gale? Yes, correct. Gale is the development. grant administration is Gale? That's correct. So they're getting thirty thousand dollars to implement this. So I'm getting fifty. So right, because there are federal guidelines that come into play that we have to comply with. And there are scoping meetings that occur. There's project coordination. I mean, just leading into you know developing the scope of work and coordinating with the independent fee estimator and attending meetings with you know MassDOT and FAA and things like that. Um, you know, just just to prepare you know to get to the point where we can even submit a grant application to submit the grant documentation um, that's necessary as part of. So we'll talk to him, and he'll probably need uh, city council approval. I don't know. It, it, it depends so. on what he has. They did on the other local to share. He had to get the approval. Yeah, from but that was from the. I forget what that was on. That was something else. But yeah, we have to. He, he's the one who can tell us because I mean we we work on the, his budget because we're not separate okay. from the rest of the city. Okay. Okay. So as soon as uh, we know something, we'll find. Um, okay. Quick question for you. Yeah, we'll have to make, we'll have to maybe see if we can. Um, we'll have to see what his timeline will be something. Okay. Um, he knew this was coming. So yeah. Okay, so I mean, hopefully, I my only concern is you know with that March with 1st. that March first deadline. This you know, and I and I I'm not intending to rush anybody on you know on decisions or anything like that. That is not my intent whatsoever. It's just unfortunately with you know this is the the last commission meeting before that um before that grant application deadline so it's just in a little bit of a a little bit of a, a tough you know tight kind of timeline type of space um you know so um so if i mean if the dis if the ultimate decision is to be made by the mayor regarding funding um, well, we should have an answer by March first. Well, we gotta have it. Well, the well, grant has to be first. submitted by March first. Well, so we should have the timeline. But I'm days. pretty sure he has to run it through the city council. Pretty sure. You know, that's what I'm thinking. But see, they'll have a council meeting in two weeks or a week. Okay. I, um, one, I so don't know if there be, was one last week. It'll now. be tight. <laughs> so right. Well, so I good. guess my my concern is I'm not knowing does. The commission need to make a vote to move the process forward, and the next commission meeting would be after the deadline. Right, but what I'm saying is, we let's we can. <clears throat> I guess it's can we make it? We'll approve it if the mayor approves it. Sure. We just have another meeting. Yeah. If we have to have another meeting, we can. Right. Well, what would, what would be the situation if the mayor decided to resist and say, now we're going to be more frugal going forward for a while, we're not doing it. What, what happens then? It would be at least a year before we go after it again. <clears throat> that means nothing would happen beyond much. There would be some stuff, but not a whole heck of a lot. 
I mean, I can I can see what FAA's position would be on extending the grant application deadline, but I did casually pass it before the yeah, the right. planner, and it was like very much we really need all these in by March first. You know, we really need all these in by March first. So well, we'll do the best we can to get you that answer yeah. as soon yeah. as we can. Yep. Okay. Okay. We have to have another meeting. We have another meeting. No. We're, we're another meeting. We're on your phone call. Bye. Yeah. We'll yeah. we're, we're proceed. Okay. From that point, I guess. So, have a day. Are you going to go see the mayor tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So, we'll have an answer tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. But we'll see. Yeah. We may have to talk our, since our number one advocate at the council died. Right. Right. He was a pilot and worked very closely and he was an active council member. So hopefully that will not impede anything. Mm -hmm. So we'll try. But I know that I, I have to be very careful yeah. what we commit to. Understood. Yes, for and uh, it takes three days to get a meeting together. Yeah. I mean, requirements. <clears throat> okay, so we'll give that a shot. Um, <clears throat> I guess what it would amount to is have everything ready to go. Yeah. Yep. And I and I can certainly, um, you know, once we find out from the mayor, you know, I can certainly. Get everything. I mean, I, the record of negotiations letter, fortunately, is already prepared, so I can, you know, go through you with about um, yeah. you know, I, um, and I guess if there is a commission vote that's needed, if the mayor does need a commission vote, it would be possible to hold a yes. subsequent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we can put that together, but I just want to try and give everybody as much time as possible. Mm -hmm. Why can't we approve it subject to the mayor? We can, if you want, I think. That's the easiest thing to do. And we don't have to have another meeting. Good point. So we'll just time. do that. We can make that motion. And make, a, make a motion about uh, waiting for the mayor's approval if, if it goes through. Um, so, so it's all set. Yeah, subject to approval by the mayor. Okay. okay. I'll second that. Second. Who, sort of, who made the motion? Andrew, Andy, and uh, okay. Uh, let's see. That way, if the mayor approves it, we don't have to have another meeting because we've already. Okay, we have a, a sentence or two which describes a motion being made yeah, subject to the right. approval of the uh, mayor. Yeah. Please. Right. I'd like to hear it. <laughs> what is the motion? Trying to figure that out right now. To approve. Uh, it's we're, we've motion that we're going to move forward with this wildlife as a hazard study area. Maybe. Right. It could be, you know, um, authorizing the bill to forward the paperwork. The grant, the record of negotiations and the grant applications to Correct. Mayor Nicholson. Pending. Pending. Mayor. The mayor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that clears the way so that 
okay. everything else can move. So, you know, sentences could be written, which would very carefully define. I have always thought about here. The that. minutes, I usually do the minutes listening to this yeah. meeting okay. over and over and over again. That's sort of how I operate, excuse me. Yeah, but that's how I, I, I listen to the minutes of this meeting and I will write it up to reflect that. Right. But it's pending the mayor's approval is the key. Stay word in that. But we want to try and, you know, if we can get them to do it, that would be great. But we're not going to predict anything that I don't tell the So does that have was approved and or is it approved unanimously or uh, yes, I get approved. Yeah. Yeah. questions I there was some additional information um, no no new updates just um, information about what the CIP was held and the airports BIL funding that was um, that was all I had if anyone else has questions um, any items that I can take back to the office um, answers that you're still looking for that you're missing from us uh, no, and yeah. the limits, so. yeah. yeah, and I'm hopeful that you know that work will be scheduled hopefully within a week or so. Okay. bill in December uh, doubled from the November amount. December was $796.47. November was $368.62. Now, there was a lot of activity going on in here, and we did have the heat on. Also, that was right when the new bunker was put in across the road. And uh, Jim and I talked about it, and it has a mini split heating system in it and uh, Jim and I suspect, although we don't know for sure, that that may be why the electricity spiked. So I went over there and it looks like you turned it down to 51 degrees. No, I didn't touch anything in there, but it, oh. the, uh, I think they did when they left. Okay, so it's down to 51 degrees, so I'm waiting till the next bill comes to see if it's gone down any. We don't know any other reason why Price per kilowatt hour, did that change uh, in the December, January time frame? At my price per kilowatt hour at my home, uh, cost my uh, electric bill at my home to go up by, I don't know, 70%. Right. I know that well, yes. this is Templeton, so they're the municipal yeah. electric, and they're usually pretty good if anybody has price per kilowatt hour. They're lower than the national grid, I was yeah. told. Uh, we were just concerned because it's uh, greater than doubled, and we want to know why. Is well, it because we're using it uh, too quick, early? A uh, quick look at your electric bill will tell you whether over the last three, four months, whether they've jacked the price up. Because let me tell you, these uh, monopolistic uh, uh, entities that uh, run with guaranteed profits are free and fast and uh, raising the rates. First opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Well, I did. I did call them and ask them, and they just told me that we were using it more. Yeah. They didn't tell me they had a rate change, so I can look at, I can compare, and then the only other thing that was different, we had the contractors here, we had the doors open, sure. and then we had the new bunker. So we're waiting for the next bill to see if it's should be broken down on that bill between the two buildings because it's two separate meters. Yeah. 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 So I'll uh, give an update at the next one we should have a bill by then to see but it's it's high um, we're also using more diesel oil however we've had a couple of snowstorms and a lot of cleanup uh, Jim and Rob and myself are doing the snow plowing Jim did a lot of uh, logged a lot of time on the um, on the uh, loader 
this week than last week. We're not paying them for our time, right? are we? <laughs> well, but you logged a lot of time on the, on the loader. Would they come very well? Yeah, and uh, so we're using more di we're using more diesel. Well, we bought diesel back in last month or the month before. The month month before November, yes. I think. Before it started snowing, and we just re we just bought more refilled it, right? Yeah, yeah. We refilled everything uh, before the storm started. Yeah, and we still have you know still snowstorms to come, and we uh, the fiscal year doesn't end until the end of June, so we still have the long morning season to go to. So that's uh, we're just keeping track of that. Um, Owen from Mass DOT is allowing us to put in a grant, a grant for a new furnace. I have to get two bids. The first one was $22,500 for the commercial furnace plus an extra $6,500 for duct work. They would bring it out here and have three registers to come out so that this room is not ice cold when that room is hot. $22,000? $22,500 to replace this. this this model doesn't and What exist. portion of that 22.5 do uh, we get the versus the grant? We get um, the grant's going to cover all of it. The grant is going to cover all of it because it's energy related. So we cobble up no funds to have this. I believe that's the case. So uh, um, I will ask him that when he he said he would help me fill out the grant paperwork. Uh, grant applies well. I, from Mass DOT, he said we have money for that. It's old. It needs to be replaced. It's not working properly. And he said this is the second time he said that. It's usually not a handout, though. It's usually uh, they're going to. Well, a grant would be a handout, where it's a. I'll find out. Yeah. yeah. I'll find out and let you know exactly what it is. Um, okay. So that's that. So we're working on that. Uh, we were approached by the, the uh, Gardner Chamber of Commerce. I think it would be helpful if we were a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it would help get the word out about the airport. We could have uh, membership meetings here. One of the members wanted to have a car show, and we're really the only big area that uh, they could have a car show here. So I wanted to ask, uh, would the commission like to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce? And would you like to have a car show and other, other things and get the word out about the airport and, or, or not? What they call it, Fitchburg, when they do that? That's uh, Mid-State. Uh, yeah, Mid-State Car Show. Yeah. It's two, oh, and, 285 uh, dollars they a year. They have that. Well, they have Fitchburg, they have uh, Waiting for the wheels. That's a swap. 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 Like oh, drag strip cars up and down the runway kind of thing? No. No, they no. did do it. Not on, not on the runway. Nope. <laughs> so, <laughs> how, how this all came to be, uh, to be but I was, I joined uh, one of the legislative group of the chamber. I on my business is on the chamber. And we were talking about uh, money and grants that were out. And they informed me that Gardner received a grant through the, the um, Chamber of Commerce for new signage of important businesses in Gardner. And they said, hey, uh, the airport's not on here. Let's add the airport. So uh, we'll have new signages from Route 2 all the way here that will all be matching to all the other signs of Gardner that will be on this grant. And that's when they said, hey, you know what, it'd be nice if the the airport joined the commission because then the chamber then can promote uh, to all the other businesses of Gardner. Hey, we have an airport, it's well to be used, you can fly in. It's a beautiful airport and a great piece of property. Right, so, so um, for what they're asking uh, to join the chamber, I think it would be more beneficial to us than not joining the chamber. If you want to, $285 a year. Yes. Uh, no. Science for the airport usually are provided by Mass Aeronautics. Right, but these are uh, addition to that. I guess it's going to have like that little logo on it, or the chair or something. It's all in the plan of stages right mm -hmm. now. So it would be, like I said, it would be kind of. There are signs. 
both, yeah. both directions. Correct. Those are the regular state issued ones, but these mm -hmm. will be additional signs um, on I more roads for us to get, to get here. That's another question that has to be answered in the mayor's office. What? Joining in the chamber. Okay. All right. We'll ask him. All right. Again, it's spending money. What I was saying, what I was to go back to the having a car show, it would have to probably be something with wings and wheels type setup, some kind of thing where it indicates both, whether we just call it a fly-in or something. We could do because that. Because yeah. if we don't, it, FAA or the mass dot might have a problem and say no. Yeah. Okay. But well, we've had many other car shows here in the past, previous years. That's past. We can have I'm a fly-in at the same whatever. time. Yeah. I'm just saying that that's always, we have to be able to connect it somewhat. It makes it go much easier with MassDOT and the FAA. I mean, they, uh, they are clamping down on a lot of stuff. Well, that's fine. I'm sure are we, we going to have... Uh, I don't know. They I have seen a from the, uh, that has to be determined because the I think what would happen that the change would be that we have to close the airport, but we can. I think there's a way to work around all of that too. Yeah. But here again, if they will accept it as aviation related. It's, uh, there was several, we had, we had casual conversations about it, and it seems to raise a flag when we do. So, That's uh, fine. Yep. we just got to tread carefully. Speaking of yeah, the MassDOT. Oh, I want to jeopardize any future funding. Right. Yeah. right. Speaking of MassDOT, they uh, attempted to come up last week to inspect the fuel farm and inspect the trees at the end of the runway that the contractors removed. Well, you got water cut down though. There was ice and they had to uh, return, well, but they will be rescheduling to... 200 foot ceiling and stuff. To do that, yeah. Well, those guys fly in? They fly in and they have a, an MDA out, so. out of Norwood. They fly out of Norwood and they turn around and stir them with that. A chopper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Indeed. So I, I, I just, you know, we have to be very careful that we relate stuff to flying and it has to make, I think they're very strict on what they're trying to do. I think it's too strict, but uh, yeah. I think there's some more problems. Who's they, please, Jim? Mass say? DOT. Mass DOT. Right. So are you saying, did I hear that Mass DOT is uh, uh, unenthusiastic about uh, Fly-ins and modular no, no, things. No, no. Well, maybe <clears throat> they have to qualify it, and we have to play by the rules. And knowing what the rules are, it's the hard part. So the rules have changed since the last yes. two, three, four years in the past. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a copy of those rules? No. Can we get a copy of those I rules? I don't know. <laughs> and why have the rules changed? Because DOT has spent all this money here. Because we had COVID. Oh. And yes. they're big on safety. <clears throat> And it hasn't been a problem so in the past. But where do we are, are, ask for these rules? Well, you can probably get them by going on a mass DOT site, but I'm not sure if they're written there or where it is. I know every time we've raised the question, because they had a lot of questions about drone activity. A lot. Yeah, drone so, activity. Uh, I, I'm against drones. <laughs> They have to, you know, and we, MIT is a very good and loyal Ten. user. Yes. And, we like to, and we like to have them here. And we like to keep them here, and we yeah. figured out a way to do that, which is okay. But they were, um, and it's only, you know, I think that there's a lot of things that we have, we have to just, it's not ask for forgiveness, you have to ask for permission. Mm. Yep. And otherwise it jeopardizes everything. Okay, so one more thing I had. 
Uh, we have quotes to paint the outside of this building, and it's very reasonable. Do you want to do that in the spring? Now that the inside is done, do you want to have the outside of this hanger and all this, although there is some rotten wood on these windows that probably has to be repaired. Do you want to, we can talk about that maybe next month too, but it's very reasonable. It also comes down to what our budget will allow. Right. If, if, the, if the surfaces of the wood are in terrible, you know, a lot of negative conditions, I would think painting it would be just almost a waste of time. So the True. condition of the material needs to be. Well, it's all metal, 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 okay. metal. That's new wood. It's really just this front part. These windows look a little we know the punky. The soffit. The, the soffit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we might need to look at the painting. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the entryway right here is ready to fall down. It's all yes, good. and the roof, the roof is leaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. Well, so a nice upgrades have been made, that's for sure. It looks yeah. much better. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. better so keep we, moving. If we have any money left, yeah, maybe so we can talk about we're that. We're going to have to uh, see what. Next time. Yeah. That's it. Do we have to make this handicap accessible? <coughs> that's why I put a 36 inch door there. Oh, yeah, this, a 36. This, have to put I in. made this a 36 inch door. That, that is a 32 inch screen would have to go away and that would have to be enlarged. Yeah. That is, that is and you could roll in through this door if that 32 inch screen was in line. So if you flew in and you had a handicapped person, you'd have to go around. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That would be probably the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, I'd be depending on the door operation here on this side if we try to put a ramp in. Yeah, but this door would be handicapped accessible. I would like to fix that little bump in the cement on the floor there. That's mm. not right. But then it comes out and we don't have a uh, handicapped accessible bathroom. No, we don't. So, you know, we got a lot we of other issues. Easily enough, we could, we would have to enlarge that door. And we have we to have handles, handles, but it also, it also has to be a lot larger for the for the, 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 the wheelchair to go on the side of the toilet. Right. Right. And there's we, not enough room in there. We looked at that. You take that wall down and you bring the door out. It's five feet. Yeah, and it's then you have five feet to go in and go around. But the door would have to come out and right. that wall would have to come well, out. This Which, is this whole front of the building. But usually they don't require it until you get a threshold. It's not for other that thing. So, okay. Hopefully we can stand with the wire for a while until the new building comes. <laughs> That's what the plan is. Um, there were several other things that were brought to my attention. Um, and I think we're, we've, we've got to Trying, you you mentioned something about gentleman was going to come down for the plow this week, or no? uh, yeah, he was supposed to be here tonight. Obviously, something must have came up. Uh, he did not make okay. it. Okay, I will be moving for ten days for the next week. Um, I was looking for things like signage for around here. We have, <laughs> yeah, we had I had a meeting with uh, Line and Sign last week, and he uh, assured me by the end of this week we'll have a quote. The what kind of signs? The sign at the end of the runway and the sign above the hangar. Uh, I'm talking about something that says this is a pilot lounge, this is where the bathrooms are, this is emergency numbers to be contacted, okay. you know, hosted, you know, things like that. We just finished the construction. We're not. We we got, know. We we got to get to that to where we are. Yeah. But Still operating, we have nothing to. Well, we can have a, a, a approach lineman and have him give us. Well, I don't know. I mean, here again, what what are we going to ask for? The uh, uh, sign at the end of the runway. What might that say? Welcome to Gardner Airport. 
Cara, ainda não me lembro. Cara, eu me lembro. On the hill. Well, that's what I wanted. No, that's what I was going to use the rock for, but rock isn't any good for us. So, so I was going to put on the fence. No, it was going to be free to be standing. Free standing on the hill. On the hill. Big. And this one on the hangar, the the letters are faded. We thought we would. But I mean, we need to make it so that it's user friendly. And we need to. That will, by itself, help people become comfortable and help them. That's the whole idea. Um, I want to have it so that, you know, if a pilot flies in here, they can answer their own questions as well as get help without, depending on anybody, you know, without dialing 911. And if they do, to make sure that everything is connected. But I, you know, Kenny Stump is still out there, and he get he was getting calls within the last year of people coming in, and that's the fact that I don't understand is how. To get well, that needs to be changed on all the sites that are connected to the Gatineau Airport. Well, it's not only sites; it's a lot of publications and there's a lot of stuff out there, and. Well, we I don't think it's how publications that have been out for the last 30 years. Or old websites that haven't been updated. Well, those are the things that we have to look for. And the Guardian I mean, websites have been updated. Yeah, but I mean, you go on to... And the AFT has been updated, and the Four Flight has been updated, and the FAA has been updated. It just has to be, you know, it's, there's a lot of things that go into have to make sure so that we're not applying for somebody and our problem is not getting out. Or liable for what? what? Huh? Liable for what? Before it was the door was locked, they couldn't even get in. Oh no, I'm not saying yeah. that. I think we're we're we're, we're right. heading in the right direction. But I'm gonna say the details of where it's gonna come. Okay, well, but that's that's fine. We'll you know, I can um, so we have, it says one in the men's bathroom and there we hang those back on the wall. It's a start. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's, so it's, and, and, you know, it's just that sort of stuff like, uh, we said there was a suggestion, I think, was it you, uh, John, yeah. on, uh, finding the 1 8 sign? You know, the 1 8 would go. Oh. Comparable with the 360 sitting there at the coffee table. I looked at it, it's faded beyond people so it so we can, you know, just to replace the plexiglass or something like that. It's in it, you know, we can so start. What's that got to do with the doors? I didn't say anything about doors. Okay. I'm saying. When the sign for the bathroom we got the roof Men's and ladies. Men's and ladies, yeah. So it would be politically correct, it needs to say unisex. Well, it's only one, but we have to have two. And so it's, it's a, you know, I mean, it's all the little nuances that make an experience of coming in here from somebody from outside. Well, we, get, we, get a lot of, we get a long ways to go still. But there's things you can do now. We're working on it. That make it. Really, we just finished construction, so we're work, we're working on it. Yeah, one step at a time. You know? it's, it's getting there. That's how it works. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. It is. Obviously, there any any uh, anything new? A new business? Can you work on the one seventy two? Huh? You about the one seventy two and the Cherokee. Cherokee's gone. Um, Noel, yes, so Noel is paying his rent for the 172 and he plans to continue to do that and even though it's hard to believe he plans to uh, leave that thing there, pay the rent until he uh, decides to retire and then he's going to make it his, uh, his restoration project. Yes, so we have $2,000 
plus an extra $1,500 in our gift account, and that can be used for whatever. Um, I don't feel we should use it for the scholarship fund because it's not enough. I was hoping it would be $10,000, which would be more meaningful to actually give to a well-deserved person so that they could take flight lessons. $3,500 is not really enough to do so, unless anyone wants to you know, donate. But uh, that $2,000 plus uh, Kevin actually donated the extra $1,500, which he does every year, to um, to the airport, so we do have 3500 to do something with. So we could actually use some of that money to restore or repair our radio, so we have a radio back in here. Uh, we don't have one to restore. Uh, according to his uh, well, we have a radio? Yes, we have a radio, and, um, you know, let's put it up and see how bad it is. I do have extra speakers that we could Put to see if we can hear better. Um, it could be refurbished. Maybe there's something wrong with it. We may have some money that we could refurbish it. If it's is real that, junk, that, then yeah. Is that the one that was sitting on the table up here? That the one that was up here. That's the one that Dominic had. Yeah. yeah. He's given that to us. So he gave it to you. Yeah. Really, Dominic? Mm-hmm. Sure, same guy. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice day that day. Yeah, it must have been yeah. Day, yeah. I said, well, pay for it. He said, oh, do you know, you put you it back a few back. years back. Kenny bought a couple of used ones, and there was the ones that were sitting on the, the old table yeah. that were over the Those are down in storage. We so, still have those. Yeah, they don't. But they don't work, but we could have them refurbished. Yeah. One send them out to a radio shop, and they fix them. So we could bring all three of them and say, hey, which one's worth fixing? Yep, yep, we can do that. Is that cost effective? What's a new one cost? Hey, you think that's better? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you buy a fancy, yeah. A handheld. You can buy a handheld for three, four hundred dollars. Yeah. But you don't want a handheld. Typically, they refurbish off. it. They yeah. don't really buy new ones. So yeah. We need a log book for pilot signing in. Too. That's down storage. Could bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. And all those old. Pictures we're going to bring back up. We'd also like the history of the airport put there somewhere. Um, there's a lot of nice pictures that people have, newspaper articles. We'd like to fill this whole wall with some pictures. And those are all down there, too. Yeah. We tell the duck work is so. up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the only thing, the duck work might be in the way of our pictures. But so, yeah, we had to wait for that. The, uh, and the only other question I had was the airport. How many operations and the guard system? Yes. Yeah. 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 TBD. Because I think that's important to give us some some I mean, we, like I said, John and I were here on Sunday and we had four in an hour. Yeah. Take off some of this. Great. So, you know, I mean, and, and it happens a lot more than we want. It, right? So, or at least the special. Okay, um, motion to adjourn. Second it. 614.